talk a little bit about these uh, very interesting systems. Um, when we did, uh, was it two weeks ago, Karen, we were talking about um, clock system in the industrial project, right? Do you guys remember that? Uh, we talked about uh, the clock system, we talked about the paging system, and we talked about the fire alarm system for our project. Uh, this book also have a clock system, a paging system, um, and a fire alarm system. So that's why this chapter is really nice, kind of tied to what we have done in the commercial, in our industrial project. So here's the system that we're going to talk about a little bit about how they work and what do they do for a living, my friends. Master clock system. Oh, oops. So we'll talk a little bit about the master clock system. Let me grab my uh, pointer here. Uh, which you guys are very familiar with, my master clock system. Oh, does it want to write again? All right, Aaron, what's it? Oh, there you go. Now we're talking. No, we're not talking, so let me use it to write. Okay, let me see. Here we go. I don't know. That's interesting. And show. Okay. Let's go back into. Um, let me see if I can get my pointer here. Doesn't want to do. Okay, so we have the master clock system, guys, like you, you've seen here. Um, my master clock system right in this area here. We also have something called program system where you can communicate. Now, I want to remind you guys, this project is industrial. There are, um, it's a manufacturing floor, and there are people, laborer, are working on this manufacturing floor, and we need to communicate certain signals with them as in breaks start and end of the shift karen in, in a manufacturing floor uh the time that you start and end the shift and uh and a certain wording and what's not so what they do they have for the for the time we have this master clock system that you guys installed 15 inches and, and 12 inches in different location the manufacturing floor and the industrial building we do have something called also program system where you can communicate breaks with the people through signals and what's not we have a paging system where you can page certain people. You guys install the paging system through the um, the building, and we said we're going to install them not less than two speakers in every room, right? And we, I believe, we put them 20 feet on center or 20 to 25 feet on center for our speakers. That's your paging system, Adam. And then the fire alarm system. This is our third time doing a fire alarm system, guys. The fire alarm system. We said we have fire alarm control panel that interface with. Uh, smoke detectors, and we don't have heat detectors, and horns, and strobes, and pull stations, and what's not. So that's a topic that we will be talking about. Master clock system, guys. Um, the, the, the one master clock system that they have, Adam, in this project, it looks something like this. They have uh, the master clock that control display unit. So we have a centralized, they have a centralized clock that receive the signal from the satellites, um, or radio frequency, or what's not, and display all these signals either wire via wired or wireless through the whole plant. Does that make sense, guys? So we have a master clock system that received. That's exactly what you guys did with me. You have a mass either atomic clock, which these are independent ones located everywhere else, or a master clock that received the signal and distribute the signal throughout the whole manufacturing floor. Uh, what do they do for, for a living? So, number of units that displays the time. We have display units. It's an LED units to indicate the time that can be seen from uh, far away with with a different um, uh, height and what's not. Display size. Here's the size that they're doing: 0.55 inches. Um, and what's not? And they have different uh, different criteria of of uh, display this uh, uh, discharge display that they use. So. Any comments, guys, any questions? What I want to focus is mostly on how the master clock will receive the signal and on either via wire, twisted pair, number 18, or via wireless, Adam, will distribute the signal through the whole plant. What you guys did with me for this project, we use atomic clocks, right? And we place them independently throughout the manufacturing floor, and they, they themselves will directly receive the signals and synchronize with the satellites. So we did not use this system. If you have um, if you have an area where it's hard to receive a signal, guys, um, what they use like an area where it's, it's underground or what's not, and you need to use these display units, what they do is they have an antenna that receive the signal on the roof, bring the signal through this display unit, and this display unit via a wired or wireless will send all these signals all the way to the display. So this will be the master, 
and these will be the slaves, just display the unit part. Does that make sense? The one that we use, I want to remind you guys, was not this way. We use atomic clocks exactly like this one. You're looking at it right there, distributed evenly in the plant. And they're all LEDs. And uh, do you guys remember when we went to Boston Scientific, you saw them all over, these uh, atomic clocks distributed all over the plant to give you the time. So that's what they're using. The, um, in the U.S., they use guys uh, a signal that comes, a radio signal that comes WWV, I think from Colorado, uh, done by National Bureau of Standards, and they send this signal wireless to synchronize all these atomic clocks, all these atomic clocks. Um, okay, signal. So there's a, a couple of ways of getting that clocks to work. The old time guys, they used to have single phase synchronous motors, Adam. They bought a synchronous, single phase synchronous motor, and they run it at synchronous speed. And it will be um, a speed of synchronous motors proportional to the number of poles and line frequency and whatnot. So they they receive the, the frequency 60 hertz and uh, convert it into time uh, via a synchronous motor um, and a few mechanisms. But the problem with this one, guys, it used to be the accuracy of this system was within a couple of minutes per, per month. So every month you have to go readjust it within a couple of minutes. That's bad, right? You don't want that. So you, you, your cell phone is not is not that bad in, in terms of accuracy. Then the smarter than Chad start using guys sensing. Um, there's another method that's called sensing of vibration produced by uh, quartz crystal. They have that quartz crystal that vibrates, and by vibrating they measure the time. All these guys are methods of measuring the time. How are you going to measure the time? You know, so two methods: synchronous motor can get you there, or uh, quartz crystal that vibrates it resonates at some specific frequencies by imposing an AC signal on it uh, across two faces resonant frequency is extremely constant so who who cares why this is a quartz crystal is a good idea versus the synchronous motor Karen because of accuracy look at the accuracy we went Adam uh, from one uh, minute a month that's off one minute a month into one second a month, right? That's not bad, one second a month. So that's versus if you have a synchronous motor for your clock, the old ones, guys, they have they used to have a synchronous motor. So anyway, for most of us, this is all knowledge. You know, you, atomic clocks will get you there right now and, and, and move on. Okay, any comments about the clock system before we move into another system that's called program system? So the only thing I want to emphasize about the clock system, guys, there's a master clock, receive the signal, radio frequency signal, synchronize and, send, and, and receive a signal to synchronize the time, and then send another signal, wired or wireless, by, to all these display units to display the time. One method. The other method is atomic clocks, where directly communicate um, um, to, to the satellites or to a radio frequency signal, receive a radio frequency signal, and adjust the time accordingly. Where do we display them? We display them in every place where we, we need the time. Now with the, with the cell phones, guys, and computers and everything else, there's not a whole lot of you can do. Still, if you have a manufacturing floor and people are having their breaks, especially unionized environment, where you have a 15 minutes break and what's not, and you need to you need you need to have a time so people can take their breaks and what's not. Okay, the second, um, after the master clock system, the second system that they talk about, guys, is called program system. The program system, uh, this is uh, very similar to a paging system, except it sends horns and bills and buzzers. So when you want to have a break, like in high school, uh, Adam, your, your bill will go off and then um, kids will run for a break and what's not. So they communicate, they call it the program system. It's not a paging. Though it could interface with your paging system, it sends signals. It doesn't send voice. Paging system sends voice, right, for the most part. So it's, um, um, it provides an atomic signals for the operation of horns, bills, and buzzers. What do they do for a living? This program, uh, Karen, it indicates, the signal will indicate the end and the start of a shift, the breaks, lunch periods. Uh, remember, in a manufacturing floor, you need to communicate with the um, the blue color type of people who are working there, um, especially most of these guys, you're in an environment, you can't just leave the machine and go take your, your uh, coffee break whenever you want, like we do in an office, right? 
you can take your coffee for the most part. Michelle Cool Erickson, do you guys have a, a bell where they rang to go to for lunch? No. It's a professional environment. But if you have a manufacturing floor, guys, where your work depends on somebody else's work, can I leave my machine and you and I are working on the same machine? Can I leave mine and go take my break? And well, that would interfere with your work. So you understand why in a manufacturing floor we need these programs because uh, the, the the job, everybody's job, directly related directly uh, interface with every other uh, the, every other uh, person's job so they depend on it directly okay um, it can provide different signals to the plan different parts at the proper time so you can communicate by uh, horns bills and buzzers to the whole plant or certain part of the plant so it doesn't have to be the same signal everywhere else at different times too can you see that how they can control the timing of these signals and the lo and who receives these signals? So that's so called the program. What does it do for living, Karen? It has it's everything is microprocessor controlled right now, guys. Everything is digital and electronic. So it has exactly like you have your laptop in the front of you. It has a microprocessor based pro programming uh, uh, programmable timer, which is basically a computer, almost a computer controller. You can program in these. Everything is uh, is digital, right? But in this, uh, you can have up to a, a thousand events, uh, from a breaks into start and end and a shift into an emergency into whatever you want, to, uh, whatever you want to schedule into them. Um, cyclic event can be programmed to occur every minute, hour, day, or week in any combination desired. So you can, uh, like I said like PLCs guys and any type of program if you have control of a timer you can uh, and a bunch of signals you can do anything you want with them so um, there is 32 output channels can be tuned uh, turned on uh, at the same time so this particular one have 32 ch uh, output channels to send 32 output different outputs into the um, into into your plant any comments, guys? Any questions about this program? Communicating with people via signals, buzzers, and bells, and what's not in a manufacturing floor. Then they, they also uh, they have. I don't know if they still use the cassette tapes. Cassette tapes to save all these programs. Recorders connected to jack on the rear of the timer, so they record the events and what's not. Um, there are also digital clocks with them. Everything has a clock. Um, clock operated by uh, crystal oscillators inside this equipment. And also they have a battery backup for this system. So if the bars go off, you will continue to communicate directly with your, uh, with your uh, manufacturer people, people who work on the manufacturing floor or elsewhere in, um, in the event of a power failure. Any comments, guys, any questions? Any comments, any questions? In addition to the clock system that they have, they will have so-called, I don't know, program system. And also, that's also in addition, Karen, to the paging system that they're going to have. The buzzers and the bills and the whistles and what's not, these are one system. In addition to that one, we're going to do the paging system. Any comments about so-called the program system, Adam? Does that make sense in the manufacturing floor? Okay. Okay, so we've got the program system. Um, and if you guys can read how it goes, it's there's so many inputs and outputs for that program system. The last system or the third system that they have, so we have a clock system, master clock system, Karen. We have a program system, uh, the bills and the buzzers, and now they have a paging system. Paging system where you can use voice to communicate via voice with people. Evacuate, uh, call chat to the office, uh, emergency call for Karen and what's not. So that's your paging system. We did a paging system in our, in our project, right, guys? We did not do a program system, so-called program. We did the paging system. Now, with these systems now, all these systems can interface, uh, Adam. You can interface the buzzers with the paging system, and, you know, they're all interfaced. Okay, paging system. The, the main goal of the paging system, guys, is to communicate via the voice, voice to the people in your plant, right? Tell them what to do. Um, you can interface it with the buzzers again, make make the talk as well as have a buzzer and what's not. When it, when it comes to the paging, guys, we talked about how do you place your, your speakers. Paging is made the heart of the paging and speaker system. You have to display all your speakers in certain location in the area. 
uh, recommendation is two speakers per area, at least minimum of two speakers per area, and 20 to 25 feet on center. We have, uh, um, Anna, remember we did in the office, we did uh, regular speakers, right? And in the manufacturing floor, we have horn speakers, big horn speakers. And in order to communicate, in order to hear people, um, um, in order to hear any person, guys, you have to have at least five decibels higher than the ambient um, ambient uh, um, uh, noise. So if the ambient noise is 15 decibels, you need a 20. You need to communicate with 20 decibels plus five. Uh, so 15 plus five, 20, in order to um, to be able to uh, intel intelligently um, understood. So that five decibels above the ambient temperature, five is to be 15 at one time. For signals of voice to be heard, it should be at least five decibels louder than the surrounding noise level. Okay, a couple of things. Um, when you, you guys dealt with this one, the amount, the area that you need to cover, the number of paging units needed. So you need speakers to communicate and you need a unit to pick up typically the phones, guys. You can dial the phone and use your phone as your paging system. Um, you also have to take into consideration expansion of the system if you are to add more input devices or output devices as in uh, as in uh, phone um, where you come, come communicate with it or um, or speakers. You can uh, you can communicate via voice tone or combination of both. These are a couple of things to take care of. Uh, areas of the plant require if you have an explosion proof area, Karen, which we do. You have to have an explosion proof. If you are to put a speaker there, it has to be an explosion proof, class one, dev one. Weatherproof, if you're communicating with people outside, you have to put a weatherproof speaker. You can't put a regular speaker there because uh, of the rain and snow and what's not. And the ambient noise level. The ambient noise level, guys, you, you have to have a five um, dp, five to 15, typically dp, above the ambient, the, uh, ambient noise in order to be um, understood, in order to be understood. And these are the things. So, for example, if you are doing a circular saw, you're running a circular saw, and you're two feet away from Adam cutting a, a two by four or cutting with a circular saw or a block, look at the dBs. The dB is the measurement of, of, of noise dB is 195. That's very uncomfortable. You have to have a ear, ear protection. A jackhammer, 140. Thunder 120, these are all loud enough that OSHA require you guys to have protection, ear protection. Very loud, like Chad, 90 probably to 100, so that would be uh, industrial plant, wiring mills, that's where the plant that we have, 90 to 100. Loud is 80 to 90, uh, factory, moderate 70 to 75, normal conversation in an office. A quiet 40 to 55 in a hospital and very quiet whisper like in the library and what's not 30 to 35 dp can you guess so when chad is quiet so probably you're looking at 55 maybe 40 to 55 so in order to talk and be understood guys you have to have five dps above these can i get you to understand that one guys five dps above these so if you're in a factory five typically five to 15 so if you're in a factory, right, in this plant, and you're 90, you need at least uh, uh, 95 to 115 to be understood. Okay, so that's your um, um, your distribution. We talked about distribution, guys. 20 to 25 feet on center, two in every place at least. We have the speakers and the horn speakers in loud loud areas to get them. Um, there's a few rules about the speakers, Adam. Every time. You move away, you double the distance, your distance away from uh, from the speaker. You cut the dBs by, um, you cut the dBs by what? By four? I can't remember what the, so we have, we cut them every hertz 20, you cut them by four. Yes, we went from uh, six, I'm sorry, by six. You cut them by six. So every time you double the distance, you cut them by six, your dBs. Um, so six dBs, um so for example can you get, uh, karen i was at 20 feet away from the speaker i moved 40 feet so i double my distance away from the speaker um then i will go from 104 to 98 98 you will lose six dbs who cares um these are the rules that they use guys when you lay out your speakers so adam if the speaker is right above your head 
and um, I am 10 feet away from the speaker, you will hear 110, for example. I will hear here 104. If I move 20 feet back, I, I will hear 98. See what I mean? Every time you double the distance between you and the speaker, you lose 6 dBs. You start 120 right next to the uh, speaker, uh, move away or 10 feet away from the speaker, 110, make it 20, double the distance becomes 104, make it 40, which is basically doubling the 20, um, it goes all the way to 98, make it 80, double the 40, it will make it 92. So every time you double the distance, it, it, you lose 6 dBs. That will be on a question on the test, I'm telling you right now. Double the distance, you lose 6 dBs. Make sense? So that's uh, that's your speakers. Okay, so paging system. Um, you can have taped messages that you can instruct the employees to do as to the nature of the emergency. If you want to communicate through emergencies, there's so many of them these days. You can have tones. A um, bunch of them are here, so either messages or tones or direct voices. You have wail, conventional siren, you have high lows, you have whoop, and you have the horn. Um, all these can mean different things when you communicate through the paging system. It's like the, the program system, Adam, right? When you start, you can communicate via messages as well as via signals, via messages as well as via signals and, and sirens and what's not. Okay, any comments, any questions, guys, about the paging system? Comments, questions about the paging system? I have a couple of pictures I'll show you about the paging system in a second here. Okay, the last system we're going to talk about, Karen, is um, the fire alarm system. Fire alarm system, we're very familiar with the fire alarm system. We have fire alarm control panel. We have fire alarm announcing panel, where it announces what's going on in the plant, right? And we have the input devices and the output devices. The input devices, we have the speaker. With input devices, we have the um, um, smoke detectors, the pole stations, we have... Uh, duct smoke detectors, we have heat detectors, like you guys did a few of these in, a, in the plant. Output devices will be your horns and strobes, as well as any other vo uh, uh, messages or voice signals that you need to communicate via the paging system interface. Okay, so what is the uh, fire alarm system? Fire alarm system is a computer, guys, control. They call it central control unit, CCU, exactly what you have in your laptop. Um, there is also... Um, so the processor, which is CCU, provides communication interface between the CCU and the system controllers. Uh, so we have the brain and we have the controllers that brings the inputs and the outputs to this system. Up to 100 processor can be connected to CCUs. You'll see a few of them, guys. So you, like every other control system, there's a brain, which is the microprocessor, and there's input that you bring, inputs and outputs, right? Uh, you get inputs, you analyze it based on the program that you put in the system, guys, and then you send an output. A hundred processor, uh, up to a hundred, the processor can be connected to CCU. Uh, controller provide interface between control modules and processor. Each processor can handle up to a hundred controllers. So you can imagine how much signals um, you can bring into the fire alarm system and out of the fire alarm system, guys. Um, you can interface also with your motor control, like shut down the air handling unit, burglar alarm, uh, open the contacts for the emergency doors in case of a fire, ground fault detection, or interface with your TV cameras. Um, so you can, um, if you, in case of a fire, you can turn the cameras on in certain areas to watch what's going on. So there's a lot of interface that your fire alarm system guys can do with other systems too. Um, Okay, each fire alarm module contains a momentarily contact switch at the front of the cover that you can, with that switch, you can manually or automatically control that particular module or test that particular modules. Um, the input for the most of these guys can be heat or smoke detectors or pulse station. You guys have done a few of these in the past. Um, alarm activated with fire detected, then you send all audible alarms, which is your uh, strobes, as well as horns, your horns basically, and your strobes will be activated in the plant or in this particular zone, upon the sense of uh, fire in a certain area. There's different type of strobes, like uh, um, um, strobes, we, we talked about the strobes when we were placing them, guys, from 15 into, what is it, 55, um, um, 
different type of different type of flashes that you can get out of these. So that's basically what the system. Here's how it looks like, and everything that you can see right here inside the inside the brain. We have the um, CCU, which is the brain, the processor communicating with the CCU, getting signal from all these input devices through the controller to the processor, process and send back output devices. You need to power the whole system with one to one. And you can see the smoke detector and pulse station coming through an input device. Uh, um, and your output devices um, will be coming through a strobes and interface with paging system, um, notification circuits, and uh, what do you call it, uh, signaling circuits and what's not. We have a bunch of, everything is addressable, analog addressable or addri digital addressable or both. Um, so that's what you guys placed with your friend Chad. We didn't talk much about the wiring. We brought all these smoke detector through zones, right? And we put them into the fire alarm panel. We put them through our fire alarm panel. Okay, Karen. So what we have, we have master clock system, program system, paging system, guys, and fire alarm system. Uh, that's what we did for these. Let me see if I can show you a couple of pictures. And I know this is not the first time we talked about these. Let me... Um, See if we can get um okay. We talked about the clock system, guys, and the ability to communicate directly with uh, to the display units. Um we talked about the DPs, the DPs and the measurement of voice, the distance, double the distance, you lose six DPs. Um this is a picture, guys, like we said of your file alarm system. Typically, what we hand when we handled it. Karen, we call this all this junk stuff here. We call it fire alarm control panel. That's why Adam, we didn't we didn't get into the guts of it. You have in 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 our plant, what do you have? Fire alarm control panel. And what did you guys have? We have zones, right? We call this is zone number one and and zone number two inputs as well as outputs, right? That's what you did for with with your front chat. But all the output modules and input modules are built into the fire alarm panel, and we just brought the input and output devices, input output devices, which is the detection devices uh, and the announcing devices. So that's your fire alarm panel. Um, here's a, a display, guys, of your timer, a couple of timers that you can see here, different timers, and, um, uh, I'm sorry, different clocks, clock system that you can. Uh, based on the clock, atomic clock and what's not. Master clock system. You can see them in your um, just programmable timers to get you clock system. So that's that's a few things, guys. This is my programmable timer. Uh, the first one was oh, master clock, Karen. It looks something like this. This is your master clock that sent the signal. Display clock, here's your display clock. That's the driven by a master clock, right? Um, then we have a, a couple of timers here that you can do. Um, when it comes to the paging system, guys, we need to be able to interface with the paging system. So here's your unit used to send voices and tone signals. That's how you can communicate in manufacturing floor, uh, one way anyway. Here's your electronic equipment, speakers, different type of speakers that you can use. Voice evacuation alarm can come out of this um, a speaker. Um, also speakers, um, Adam, if you remember in the, the, we talked about the horn strobe guys in the manufacturing floor. Here's what we use it as a horn strobe here. And in the office, we use something better looking than this, but similar to this speakers, different type of speakers. So that's um, a few of these guys. Um, this is processor unit. This is for the fire alarm system, the processor unit, different type of components. Uh, this one is my power supply. That's the guts of it. These are the input output devices. These are my programmable controllers, um, modules, your input output devices for fire alarm system interface, um, different uh, different fire alarm modules, input output devices, the detection devices, smoke detectors and pole stations, and horn strobe or strobe it looks like. So this is just basically a uh, high intensity stroke. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions about that? Uh, so that's, I'm going to leave it with this all the way to the technology. Okay. So that's basically, 
basically caring what this timer is. Uh, please read it guys one time. We talked about fire alarm system now three times. The residential project, commercial project, and here's the industrial. The last time you're gonna hear Chad talking about it, guys. You get as much as you can. There's a lot of details. We didn't talk about sizing the conductors and what's not. Typically, number 18, two pair conductors, you bring them into the fire alarm system, uh, zone them, everything is digital, and off you go. You guys place all these base, uh, smoke detectors based on the criteria that we gave you, right? Uh, um, and duct smoke detectors and what's not. Any comments, any questions? Comments, questions? Make sense? Adam? Maybe? Okay. Okay, so that's what I have for you guys today. I would like to, in a few minutes here, I would like to do the uh, lighting, outside lighting. So if you do me a favor, get yourself ready for to do some uh, outside lighting today, shall we? So we can get you up and running. Thank you. Thank you. 